Now, a Cake Sports Sugar Bowl special presented by Brian and Brian and Long MacArthur of Salina. Good evening, one, and welcome into the Superdome where tomorrow the Sugar Bowl goes on. K-State, Alabama, the last game of the year. It's going to be a special one, Michaela. Your first time in New Orleans, too. It's amazing. What better place to spend it, right? I'm loving it so far. I haven't had a beignet yet, but, you yeah. know, I walked the streets of New Orleans today. Yep. Saw the parade, saw all of the streets packed in purple. Yeah. It was painted purple. Beautiful, so, I mean, yeah. I think it's like 90-10 K-State fans here, I swear. hundred so. percent. Even with the shorter drive, K-State, you know, showing what they can do. Obviously, a very special year for the Cats, Michaela. A lot of ups and downs. You know, there were points where they didn't think they'd make the Big 12 championship. They did that. They won it, and here they are in the Sugar Bowl. If you forgot any of the great memories, let's take a look at a year in review of the 2022 K-State Football Wildcats. It started with South Dakota. Malik Knowles, first snap of the season for the offense, 75 yards to the house with Deuce Vaughn leading the way. And then they had to remind everyone that they're still special teams. After a 2-1 non-conference campaign, the only loss to a very good two-lane team, it was time to make a statement in the Big 12. Adrian Martinez announced his arrival with four rushing touchdowns against Oklahoma and a legendary bow after they knocked off the Sooners. In the middle of the conference year, they had mixed results. An Adrian Martinez injury and some lackluster performances saw them drop a couple and hopes for a Big 12 title, they started to fade. That was until Will Howard took the reins and the Cats caught fire down the stretch. They played their way into the Big 12 title game and what a game it was. Deuce Vaughn's iconic run with the ankle breaker will be shown for years to come. So will the overtime goal line stand that set them up to win with a field goal from Ty Zettner. And then the trophy went up and all that confetti came down. And how about the sweet surprise to top it all off? A chance to knock off Alabama in the Sugar Bowl. Wow, well, what a year that was. Obviously, a lot of special moments that Big 12 Championship going to be remembered for a long, long time. And I think the biggest thing we think about this team, Michaela, obviously a lot of quarterback back and forth this year. Right. Adrian Martinez is the guy that gets them there. Very talented earlier in the year. Did so many great things. You saw in the Oklahoma 4 TD game. But it's Will Howard, the guy that takes them to the next level. Of course, he had some troubles starting at K-State. His first two years were a little up and down. Mm -hmm. But what a run he's had this season. Let's learn a little bit more about his teammates' things, about his confidence and everything he's done for K-State. In the era of the transfer portal, when it's easier than ever to leave a program, Will Howard did the opposite and stayed. It's really cool to kind of make it out on the other side and kind of prove a lot of people wrong and prove myself right because I kind of, you know, I, I could have left and, and, uh, and gone and tried to get another opportunity, but, you know, I kind of tried to bet on myself. And I'm, I'm really glad that I did and I'm glad that I stayed. When he got to Manhattan, Howard was expected to learn behind Skylar Thompson and prepare for his time. But his time came before most people expected with multiple injuries to Thompson over the last couple seasons. He got thrown into the fire as, as a freshman, uh, playing a power five football as a quarterback when uh, you weren't expecting to play. Uh, you were expecting to learn from a scholar Thompson behind him and then uh, take the reins whenever he leaves and then you're thrown right in. He was forged in the fire and he's come out on the other side hotter than ever. Since taking over the starting job, Howard's numbers have been amongst the best in the nation for starting QBs. Those who've watched him have seen his swagger grow, but his teammates always knew he had that cat in him. This year when he came in and stepped in, he knew he belonged. You know, and I think that was the biggest shift in his play is not the fact that he could never make those throws and could never read the defenses and, and play like that, but it's just been that confidence and it's been that swagger and it's been that leadership that that maybe we haven't seen as much in the past, but we definitely see it now. What you guys see now, we've seen flashes when he first got here. So it's as a receiver and as a brother for him, it's, it's, a, it's a, a blessing to see like how far he's come and like his ceiling is so high. I feel like you guys are still not seeing the full Will Howard. So um, just seeing like the confidence and how comfortable he is in our offense right now is like, is, is, is happy to see. That confidence comes from the work he puts in and he puts in plenty. Saturday, it's time to show the nation just what he can do. He's probably one of the hardest workers I've ever seen as far as uh, mentally and physically. Um, it's Friday before we're leaving for a game. He's throwing balls into his shoe. When we get back on Saturday, he's uh, asking guys to come out there and throw balls and, and run routes. He's somebody that's going to put in the work, and he has. He means so much to this football team, and, uh, man, I'm super excited to see what he does this weekend. Now, Michaela, there's rarely situations in teams like, you know, Will Howard and Adrian Martinez. They get along so well, despite, you know, kind of taking each other's jobs throughout the year. It's a, a special bond that they have, and it kind of goes for the whole team, right? Right. I mean, and we hear it all the time as reporters, team chemistry, 
culture, mm -hmm. and especially in football when you have such a big team, it's so important to be molded together. But yeah. for K-State, it's rang true all year long. You know, mm -hmm. Deuce Vaughn said in January he knew that this team was special. And all they preached all season long is just how important their chemistry is, and that's brought them to their wins so far this season. So let's take a look to see how just closely bonded these, this team is. Let's go! If you ask anyone on the team how they got here, their answer is the same, their brotherhood. I feel like it's different here, you know, and I've seen it, I've seen it, you know, myself, you know, even in teams here, but the team, that, the, the, the culture and the, the brotherhood that we have uh, is different, it truly is. Every team emphasizes family and culture and how important that is, and it may sound cliche, but that's exactly what brought the Cats this far. The ability that we have to, to just hang out and, and, you know, off the field stuff, you know, it, it's just, there's there's relationships going on that, that go way beyond football. Um, and, and I think that's what really makes it special is that we truly care about each other way beyond football. And, and that, you know, when, when you have that and when you have guys that truly care about and love each other, it's, it uh, you know, you, you want to play for that guy next to you and you want to, Lay it, all on the, lay it all out on the line for them. It took years to build their chemistry. They've grown together, and now they're relishing in their close bonds. At no point I could walk up to anybody in any position, you know, have a conversation with, go hang out with them. And that, it's just us being bonded together. You know, there's some teams where you go up and, you know, I'm, I'm, our offense line may not talk to any defensive backs or anything, and that's not how our team is. You know, the culture is very strong. We all hang out together. So I think that's really been what's helped us succeed this year. Cade Warner knows just how special this team is. He's a Nebraska transfer, and he's been on other teams. And he says nothing compares to K-State's culture. To see the culture we have and how close we are, I don't ever take it for granted. I just sat back and watched it like, this is awesome. And I, and I love this team. And I love these guys. And they don't realize how great this culture is, you know? And like, yeah, it's, it's great. And they, they know we have really good culture. But it's tough to know how good it is when you can't compare it to anything else, you know? And so me, I can't compare it. And it is such a blessing to be a part of this team and how much this team loves each other. There's a sweet ending on the table for the Cats this year, and they're banking on their bond to carry them through their final four quarters of the season. Everybody's really a tight-knit uh, group, not just position groups like offense and defense. So I just say uh, this group is like, it's not selfish. Like Everybody is out here trying to win for their brothers. Well, you just heard it. Culture wins at K-State, and it brought them all the way here to this New Year's Six Bowl game. Absolutely. I mean, you don't get here without this kind of group. As we mentioned, as you said in the story, it's kind of cliche to talk about family, brotherhood, thing like that. Every team in the nation mentions that. It just feels different. We're around the team all it the really time. Is. I mean, it's kind of just a different group, and that's how you get 10 wins, and you get to a stage like this, and you get to play Alabama. So speaking of Alabama, we'll talk a little bit more then right after the break. I had a little sit-down with our man Tim Fitzgerald from Go Power Cat. We'll break down everything you need to know about the history of this game and what to expect tomorrow. And now, K-State fans, I'm joined by the one and only from Go Power Cat, Tim Fitzgerald. Tim, thanks for taking a second. A lot of tease there, but we're making it happen either way. How's everything going for you so far in New Orleans? It's great. It's great. I'm not in trouble. I, I know where I'm at. I'm getting my work done. Sully, I'm, I'm adulting. I mean, that's three for three. That's all we can really ask for here in New Orleans. So, you know, we got a game to play tomorrow. K-State and Alabama, obviously two teams that... It's a bit of a different feel. You know, for K-State, a lot of people are saying like, this is like their Super Bowl, if you want to use that term. For Alabama, a little disappointing about the college football playoffs, but obviously still inspired to come out and play a great game and prove to people that they should have been that game, right? Yeah, it's cool. Alabama's best player didn't opt out. They're here. They're going to play, supposedly. Um, and we'll see how that impacts the game. But uh, Kansas State isn't just happy to be here. Kansas State understands the opportunity that faces them right now. This might be the biggest game in, in program history. You really don't know that until down the road a little bit. For example, when Kansas State finally beat Nebraska in the late 90s, you didn't realize the magnitude of that until you saw the, the success can continue. And so if Chris Kleiman can build off a game here, whether they win or lose, it still elevates them in some way, uh, will be very significant. But the program's in really good standing right now, and this is a huge opportunity for Kansas State football. 
Yeah, and when you look at the, the history of the program, like you said, K-State's in great standing right now, and they've been here before, but they want to continue that. They don't want the ups and downs. They want to stay solid. How do they do that? Is it, like you said, is that win necessary here? Is it great performance necessary here? What do the K-State team need to do to kind of uh, elevate themselves? Well, if Kansas State can win the game, and I do have a really good feeling, they seem really prepared for this, uh, it does just kind of bounce you right up into the stratosphere with, uh, you know, the college football greats. This is the name brand. This is the biggest brand in all of college football, and it's been that way for years. Even though they missed the playoff this year, they're still ranked fifth. It's not like they're coming in with four losses and they're, you know, in the in round 15. This is a really good Alabama team. So if you can show that you can play with these teams, you can probably start to recruit at a much higher level. Just continue to stair step that program up, and that's really what you you do. You, you just continue to build, and this will give Chris, Chris Kleiman a great opportunity to to elevate things even higher. So when you look at the, the history of the program here, you know, 2012, last time they had a big, child, big 12 championship into a New Year's sick type game, Colin Klein, the quarterback then, the offensive coordinator now. He said the discipline between the two teams, the maturity is a big similarity. For you, a guy who's, who's seen all walks of football for K-State, what are the similarities between these two teams? Yeah, that's a really good point. I, I mean, I think uh, Colin Klein was a, a great leader for that team. That team was uh, really well coached and sound and did the right things and cohesive. And that's really a lot like this team. Now, Will Howard, I'm not making that comparison to Colin Klein, a guy that was a Heisman finalist, for heaven's sakes. But uh, they just have good weapons. And, and like K-State, they've always found the guys that nobody else wanted or really kind of ignored. I mean, Colin Klein came to K-State and was a receiver for a while. And Bill Snyder moved him back to quarterback uh, when he took back over. And now we see a guy like Deuce Vaughn, who nobody wanted because he was too small. And nobody wanted Felix Anudike Uzama at the Power Five. If you saw a picture of him from high school, you understand why. And now, three years later, he's a man and an NFL prospect. It's amazing to watch how K-State develops players. And Felix has not missed many meals or weightlifting sessions in that time. No. Um, so I'll leave you with this. What's the biggest factor for K-State in this game? What do they need to do more than anything else to come away with a win? Well, they're really going to have to battle that front line of Alabama. They're going to have to um, um, keep protect Will Howard. Uh, you know, they, they can get so much pressure on you. They, they can really apply pressure. And, and if they start making Will Howard uncomfortable, K-State's in trouble. They really are. So once you can do that and establish that run game, I think K-State will settle in and be fine. Well, we managed to do this without any beignet powdered sugar on either of our shirts. That's a win already. Coming up after this, we'll have a little more on the game, plus some fun stuff you want to see here in New Orleans. Now, there are many keys to this game, Mikhail. A lot of things that K-State needs to do to be successful. Now, let's talk a little bit about a couple of those. I know you got one on your mind, right? Yes, definitely. And I think I got one on my right. So here's Sully's key to victory here. here. The biggest thing K-State needs to do tomorrow is mistake-free football. And they've done a very good job of that, especially Will Howard. Just one interception in his last five games, two interceptions on the entire year to go with 15 touchdowns. So they can keep it clean. They can do everything that they know that they should do and have done all season against Alabama. Alabama, who has a tremendous defensive front. You know, Will Anderson, their, their linebacker, is going to be a first-round pick, maybe a top-10 pick in the NFL draft. Uh, Kool-Aid McKinnistry in the backfield, very talented. So mistake-free football is very key for K-State. Michaela, I know you got a special one. The kids are going to like for your key, right? Get Deuce loose. I mean, who doesn't love Deuce Vaughn? Uh, yeah. We all know how explosive he is, how mm -hmm. electric he is. And so in order for K-State to pull this one off, they need that run game from him. And, you know, they need to be able to expose – Alabama's run defense a little bit and obviously we know Alabama's a powerhouse they have a great defense but Deuce is one of those guys that he's able to pull off an explosive play he's yeah. able to show out when they need him to and you know he has what 1400 yards rushing yeah. nearly 400 yards receiving on the year this is a guy that as we all know has carried the team throughout this season and we need him to carry the team as well tomorrow so my key is for Deuce to get loose he needs to be able to put up some big plays and um, hopefully you know K-State's offensive line can be able yeah. to block for him and, and so yeah they need to be able to pull it out 100 percent led by cooper bb up front there for k-state mm -hmm. that offensive line needs to be great mm -hmm. tomorrow obviously that sets the tone for the run game you got to run it well to play against alabama opens up all the options the play action all that good stuff so 
I love the deuce I, being he's loose. He's just so much fun to watch, too. Yeah. He plays so low to the ground, and he's just able to do everything all over the field. Yeah. So clearly I'm excited about him, and I know everyone else is, too. Truly. He also loves carbs. He told us that. He ate he, about 30 big beignets. Guy. That's Huge exactly carb guy. what he said. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of carbs, there's tons of them around New Orleans. Coming up after the break, we'll take you to the sights and sounds of the parades and pep rally K-State had today. 10,000 people strong in New Orleans supporting those cats. We'll be right back. There are so many beautiful sights and sounds around New Orleans. Michaela, as we mentioned, your first time here. I've been here a few times. What's the favorite thing you've seen so far just in the city? I mean, obviously, Bourbon Street and just the people. It just it has a certain energy out yeah. here. And again, this is my first time here. Yeah. And so driving in, I saw all the palm trees all lit up and just the atmosphere out here. Yeah. You can't even explain it. It's kind of intangible. Yeah, if you've never been, you got to come down here. I hope you're here for the game tomorrow. But if you're not, we got to look at the pep rally and the parade today. Take a look at that. Truly, what a sight to behold. I mean, I was there at the parade, and I, I don't think I saw one Alabama fan. Yeah, an absolute sea of purple there. <laughs> we love to see it. All right, coming back, we have one last little segment, maybe some predictions. Stick around as we say goodbye here from New Orleans. All right, Michaela, final 30 seconds of the show here. Got to end with a prediction. What do you got tomorrow? I mean, Vegas has them plus six and a half, less than one touchdown against Nick Saban and the guys, so they got to stay locked in in order to pull this one off. There you go. I think K-State comes away with this one. I'm going to call my shot. Deuce Vaughn, <laughs> corner of the end zone, touchdown to win the game in the fourth quarter. Book it. And if it doesn't happen, never watch this video again. But thank you for joining us for our role special. It's been a great time, Michaela. I've had a great one out here. We're going to keep on having fun in New Orleans, right? Oh, yeah. We know that. Always. That's all we can do. I'm Sully Angles. Michaela Day, thanks for joining us. We'll see you soon. Good night.